Hello guys, today we'll be talking about my yearly favorites or what other creators like to call it best of beauty. So I like to include products that I've used over and over again or maybe I bought multiple throughout the year. And then I also like to talk about launches. And the last one, I even include products that maybe people aren't gonna talk about. It's not a new launch. Maybe it's been out for some time. Maybe it's like an oldie but a goodie. So I like to do a combination of the three. I already did my skincare off camera, but let's talk about some of the products that I love so much. Starting with the Peach and Lily, the Good Acids, pore toner. I don't really use toners too often, but this has been very gentle and you can use it in the morning and night. I really just use it at night every single day and I've just been really enjoying it. I have no complaints. It's just very gentle and ever since I've been using my tretinoin, I thought maybe I can't use this with it, but I actually can. So this has AHAs and it helps with all like the dead skin that I'm dealing with. I've been dealing with the driest skin that I've ever dealt with since... Is it drier than the last time when I was dealing with all the skin issues back in 2018, 2019? Maybe. It feels that way, at least right now. My skin is just so parched and I'm just, I'm not used to it as an oily skin kind of girl. Hydration and gentle exfoliating is a must. So two serums that I've been enjoying, another Peach and Lily product. This is the Copper Peptide Pro Firming Serum. This is very water-like very lightweight. I like using this in the AM and PM. This one I was using before I got this one. It's the Solo Wave Renew Complex Activating Serum. It has hyaluronic acid. I have like the tiniest bit left. The brand Solo Wave sent me their products. So you can use this in conjunction. So you have some sort of slip when you're using their wand. It doesn't have to be this. It could be any kind of serum. And then you go right in with this. I talked about this briefly in the past. Is it dead? Oh no, it's not dead. Let's see. It has like that buzzing sound. I kind of took a break using this because again I was trying to keep my skincare very simple but I was using this a lot more honestly prior to September. I think I still have a discount code with them so I'll have that link down below with these products. I totally forgot about this one since I don't have it on hand with me and there's a few products that I don't have but I do want to mention the Laneige Water Bank Blue Hyaluronic Serum. It never competed with any of my other products and then the product that went with it, the Laneige Water Bank Blue Hyaluronic Cream Moisturizer. Another product that was a bit bulky, just a nice moisturizer that was hydrating. As far as moisturizer bombs, this one's a little bit different for me since it's not something I would typically go for because it kind of gives you that greasy look which is why i only use it at night but the ren ever calm this is an overnight recovery balm i don't have that much left but this is what i've been using with my tretinoin and just recently i went one step above tretinoin i can't remember the name of it but it feels more like a serum than tretinoin where it's more creamy and i've been liking the experience but man is it dry so i've been layering that with something like this. It's not something that I would use in the morning or during the day, only when you're about to go to bed because it does give you that greasy look. I have the shell of this product since it is a refill and I'm actually waiting for my order to come in from Ali Oop, but it's the Dream Team, a three-in-one moisturizer, eye cream, and mask. It's a very gentle, everyday moisturizer, lightweight. I like how it's a refill. I'm just happy to have it back in my routine. Another product that I don't have anymore, but I do wanna buy again in the new year. The Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist. This is totally worth that it was viral at one point. I have a screenshot that says 600 plus people bought it in the past month. How accurate is that on Amazon? Is it? I'm not too sure, but it definitely entices you to want to buy it. But I miss that mess. The nozzle is very nice and fine. You're not going to get these like little droplets like the other one from this brand, their drugstore brand, Peach Slices. I find that to be a little too much for me. Sometimes I could just get into my eyes and make it a little too sensitive where this is a very fine mist and I haven't had any of those issues. So I love using this to prep my skin throughout the day or even at the end, but I wouldn't use it for longevity purposes. The cleansing moms, I have two that really stood out to me. The Neutrogena was a rediscovery because this one stayed at my house. This is the older packaging, so I'm hoping that the newer packaging is the same formula. I'm not 100% sure, but I definitely want to get the updated packaging. This just works so well for all of those mascaras that I recently talked about from Clio, from Unleashia, those types of Asian brand mascaras that are so tough to remove. Micellar water will not do it. A cleanser will not do it. You need some sort of balm or cleansing oil. This will do the trick, but it's not fragrance-free. So if you're a contact wearer or if you're sensitive eyes, this might not be that great because sometimes it could just be a little too much for my eyes, but it does such a great job at removing my mascara where I'm kind of like, well, 
what am I gonna choose that day? You know what I mean? And then the last one, which is a little more, well, it's actually definitely more pricey. The Then I Met You Living Cleansing Balm. But it definitely feels more luxurious. Even when you put it in your hands and everything, it does have a fragrance to it. It smells more herbal. This has lasted me such a long time. Does it say how much I get in here? So this one is two ounces. This one is 3.17. And I only have maybe a quarter left. This one, unfortunately, doesn't remove those types of mascaras. Let's just say it doesn't fully remove them. I should mention this product. I almost forgot about it. Even though it kind of looks like I didn't use that much, you need so little. And I was using this a lot before September with everything kind of fell apart. The La Roche-Posay Duo Dual Action Acne Treatment. So this one is 5.5 benzoyl peroxide. This was nice when I had the occasional breakout during the time of the month here and there, and that's all you need. If you're dealing with more than that, where you might need like a professional, and you gotta go a few steps further like tretinoin this is not going to be enough but for a kind of an occasional breakout here and there type of thing this has been really nice i'll be back to that product once my skin gets back to normal i love a good body oil these are from gizu this one has shimmer this one doesn't i'm not sure but i think the shimmer one is still the smaller size as you can see you're not going to go through it very quickly unless you use it every day i really enjoyed using this in the summertime or when i just want some more glow to my body just even for new year's eve i was wearing the shimmering one besides that i'm usually covered up but i also like just mixing the regular one with some lotion another gizu body product that i've been loving is the honey infused beauty balm you need so little of this like i love using this on my elbows i should probably put some on my cuticles because they've been really dry again you don't need that much i love doing this also right before i go to bed if i'm not reading or going on my phone it won't make anything greasy. I can just go straight to bed with some moisturized hands. Not everyone's going to like this Gizu smell. It's not their signature scent in their oil and their hair products. And I say that because I've seen people on the internet not like the smell. Or, I don't know, just compare it to things. All I can say is it's not their signature scent. It's a different scent. So I feel like they have two scents, their signature scent and then their other scent, which is more the oils and their body products. If you haven't seen my Gizu full line review part one and two, I'll have that up here. Definitely recommend it because I break it down even more. This one is a little bit newer to my collection. I'm not too particular with my body lotions. The biggest thing is I just don't want it to be sticky. This is the Butter Drop Whipped Oil Body Cream. And boy, is it nice. Is this their signature scent for all their Fenty Skin products? I'm not sure because I don't have that many. And the other ones that I have are the cherry one. And this doesn't smell like that. They sent me two of these. So there's this one, which I'll have linked down below. And then the other one is like shimmery, which you wouldn't know by looking at it. I didn't even know until I looked at myself and I was like, where did all the shimmer come from? And then my husband used it as well. And on him, you can't really tell because he has body hair compared to me. I'm like a naked mole rat. But that scent is very cinnamony, very holiday. If you don't like the sugar cookie holiday scents where it's very sweet, I wouldn't recommend that one. I would get this one. It's just more subtle. And I think it's their signature scent for Fenty Skin. I'm not 100% sure. This has been my go-to body cream this winter all over and it makes my skin look so good it has a glow to it you don't need that much it is thick I don't know how to pronounce this brand, but this winter I received quite a few products from them. It's L-O-C-C-I-T-A-N-E I've seen them before. This is their shower gel. So I was curious and I was like looking at the reviews because I'm just so interested in what other people have to say. And it's not necessarily going to change how I feel about it, but I'm just wondering like, what do other people have to say? So this scent is almondy. If you don't like that, then you're not going to like this because it's quite strong. But I love using this when I'm taking a bath. I just put it all over my body and it just makes the whole entire bathroom smell like this but here's the thing guys people have said multiple people have said that this smells like wet dog which is such a distinct smell if you grew up with dogs or if you have a dog right now you know that smell it's so specific and even my samoyed who doesn't smell like anything when she is wet she smells like that but this i keep smelling it thinking like 
does it smell like a wet dog? I don't get those vibes at all. Like I just smell almond. I mentioned that if anyone who is curious if they've tried it and they're like, yeah, that smells like wet dog or no, it doesn't. I just really enjoy this. My husband loves this too. We've been using this nonstop because the house has a tub. Unfortunately, this place doesn't. So I had to bring this with me. But I'm gonna be bringing it back, but I just wanted to talk about this one. I think those were all the skincare body products. So let's move on to the makeup. Before I started filming, I put on the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in mint. I love this one. Do I love this more than the vanilla one? I think so, because it's a very subtle mint. This is what I have on my nightstand. I love putting this on right before I go to bed. The two primers that stood out to me were these two. Very different as far as like consistencies. The first one is the Euphoria Pregame. This is a daily protective primer. And then the other one is the Power Grip Primer. This is the 4% Niacinamide. So although I've only had this one for not even a month, the blue one I love so much and it's been out for a while. This one came out the beginning of 2023 and I was very hesitant and I didn't buy it for so long and then I finally did. I made another e.l.f. order and I got the mini blue one because I miss it so much, but this feels the exact same. I think I'm gonna wear the Euphoria one. I might have worn this on camera once. This one feels more like a serum or even a lightweight sunscreen. I have three foundations that stood out to me this year. The first one is Drugstore. This is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Skin Tint. Now, I don't have my perfect shade. Maybe they'll expand it in the future. I wear two different ones. I wear 120 and 129, so they're side by side. 120 has the warmth that I need, but it's just too dark, which is why I mix it with 120. I can wear 120 on its own, and I have done it before. I just wish it had just a little more warmth to it. A little more high-end is the House Labs one. This is the Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. Man, is this beautiful. I love the way it wears. It has medium coverage. It looks so good. It doesn't look too makeup-y. I wore it for my ceremony when I did my makeup. I wear it for special events or if I'm going to other weddings, anything like that where I just need to wear it all day. When I go into the city, this is the type of product I wear because I'm not going to retouch my makeup and since I don't live in the city anymore, it's not like I'm gonna go to a mirror and fix it up. I need something where I put it on once and that's it. And also it's been very good on my dry forehead. Although I have oily skin, it's been good with the oiliness but it also has been good with the dryness. And the last one, which I'm going to use today since I haven't used it in a minute, the last time I used it was either spring or summer, but this is the Ulta Beauty Moisturizing Foundation Stick. Great coverage. I like products like this when you have like redness and hyperpigmentation because look how easily that just covered up the redness. I think I'm gonna go in with a foundation brush. You now we'll try something different. I feel like foundation sticks get a bad rap for being dry and this one is not at all. There are three concealers that I use the absolute most. And I want something full coverage and I didn't wanna have to worry about it. I would go in with the Huda Beauty one. This is the faux filter concealer. This is what I use for my wedding. It looked so good. I like to go a little bit lighter under the eye it covers so well, but it's not my day-to-day -day concealer. For something that's a little more creamy, day-to-day -day friendly, I think these two are really great. The Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer. This might be one of the best matches for my skin. I think I might be wearing this under the eyes, but I love wearing this just to spot conceal or when my skin was really going through it during the fall months. I would just wear this on its own and it looked really nice. It just did well over dry skin. And then my other ones have to go to the Physicians Formula Butter Glow Concealer. Concealer. When I did the full end review of Physicians Formula, the Butter Collection, I talked about these products. Although the shades are very limiting, if you can find your shade or something similar, these concealers are really great. They're hydrating, they have great coverage. I love wearing them under the eyes, but also all over the face as well. And I do a combination of which two shades? Medium to tan and light to medium. Light to medium is quite lighter than what you would think. I think I'm just going to do a little bit of Ilia. It's just something so effortless about the Ilia one that it just blends right into the skin. Oh, I forgot to talk about this product. I could have used it today. It's the e.l.f. Camel Color Corrector in green. So this just helped with the redness. If I just didn't want to wear something full coverage or just didn't want to pile on a ton of makeup, I would have put just the tiniest bit on my face, blend it with my fingers. It can be a bit drying, so just make sure to prep with a really good skincare routine. The two bronzers that stole the show are Drugstore. The Physicians Formula Butter Glow Liquid Bronzer. Looks like I barely touch this, even though I use this quite a bit. You will have this for the rest of your life. There's no way you're gonna go through all of this unless you put it on your body. And the other one is the Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. This one, I've hit pan. That is how much I used it. I am most likely going to get this again, but 
since I've used this so much in the later half of the year, we're gonna bring the Physician's Formula back in. So this one has some shimmer to it where this one doesn't. I do find the packaging to be annoying since it's a squeezy tube and sometimes you just get a little too much. But if you love the Physician's Formula butter smell, this is that smell in a bottle. I use this contour product the most. You probably saw this all over my social media, specifically my short form content because it's just so easy and it's very satisfying to put on the face. And this is the Milk Makeup Sculpt Stick. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the nose. I don't wanna do anything crazy. Just a tiny baby nose contour. Oh, I should say this brush, which I also discovered this year and I've used it all the time, is from Elle. It's a nose contouring brush. It has two sides, one that's more fluffy and the other one where I kind of like to press the product in at first, what I did in the beginning, and then go in with the fluffy brush to blend it more up into the brows. So for powders, I feel like you guys are going to be able to name these two, the Givenchy one and the Huda Beauty one. I usually use one of the other. Recently, I did like a combo. I think today I'm going to go in with the Huda Beauty one. This is the type of powder that's great for oily skin, where you will not have to worry about your skin. But it does feel a little bit heavier, but I never look oily. But the Givenchy one gives more of that pink undertone so if you've been enjoying that trend i would definitely go for that one but it's quite subtle there's some pink powders that are very strong and a little too pink for my liking but i find that to be a happy medium where you're kind of dipping your toes into the pink trend without fully committing so i have this dry spot right here it's just gonna look dry no matter what i do so don't mind that by my lip i think i put a little too much of that acne product right here and it just kind of like took all of the moisture out of my skin i don't know if i included this last year because i discovered this towards the end of the year the Charlotte Tilbury press powder this has been my go-to powder on the go or when I just have to do touch-ups because it has a mirror because it's not messy I like how it's compact see how slim it is I tend to use it in my tutorials because I'm just like holding it up because it's such a great mirror so I'm gonna include it in this one since I don't remember if I included it last year but I used it so much throughout this year and it's the same one and I think it's because I'm not using this for my full face I'm just using using it for touch-ups that's why it lasted for so long i have quite a few blushes let's go in with the cream ones so i discovered these because of sophia ritchie like many other people it's the nude stick nudies matte she wore these two shades for her wedding picante and sunkissed pink sunkissed pink i just recently wore for new year's eve i loved wearing picante during the summer months it was just so nice when you have a deeper complexion a warmer complexion maybe you're in the mid-tones to tan it just looks so beautiful on those skin tones this one's a mess not a new discovery but a newer shade to me this one is the persona cosmetics blush multi stick in guava such a beautiful color i wasn't expecting it to be this bright really pretty the first time i wore it it was too bright for me but i think i just applied a little too much but i don't think i've really shown you guys this color um i think i've been just wearing it mainly off camera but so gorgeous i can't wait to wear this when it gets warmer like spring and summer i'll probably bring this on my honeymoon this will be a great blush to wear during those times i might as well show you these since i'm not going to wear them today so this is picante and see how it's more fiery than guava, but still both warm. I'm still trying to decide which ones I'm going to wear, but maybe we'll just show you them all first. This one's newer to my collection. This is the Say Du Blush in Spicy. I love a terracotta shade. This was in my fall favorites. Another beautiful color. These were my most used powder blushes. The first one, Drugstore. This one is by Essence, their Pure Nude Baked Blush in shimmery rose i just wore this in my sugar plum fairy look i just added to my cart because i wanted to see their other shades to like finally check them out because i've been saying it again and again and what did i end up adding to my cart i put the color bold heart it's a bright coral looks so pretty for spring and summer so i think i'm going to buy that the next time i go to alto or i do like an online purchase but such a pretty blush not enough people are talking about this one this one to me is a drugstore gem this one is the laura mercier blush color infusion and fresh co so this one has shimmer to it i have another shade that's really beautiful but i didn't wear it as much as this one but it has a little bit of shimmer this is great when you don't know what you want to do to your eyes but you just want something on the cheeks that kind of is just going to go with everything so that's what that looks like see with that beautiful shimmer i might end up wearing this because i'm going for a more of a reddish lip so i don't think this will compete with that and then the last one is the bare minerals bronzer this is the one that i wore for my wedding so 
pretty. I find this color to be quite unique. I don't have anything like this. See how pretty that is? And if you have a bit of a tan, if you have warmer undertones, for something that I have to wear for a longer period of time, all day into the night, I prefer a powder blush. One of my new highlighters just shattered because it's so soft. And it happened to get on this brush a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna go and wear this one. It's my, when I don't know what kind of blush to wear, this is the blush that I wear. And if I don't want something bright or punchy, brow product that took over my life is the NYX The Brow Glue, the tinted one in taupe. I've been using the clear one ever since the pandemic. This past year, I finally got the tinted one and I'm so glad I did and I wish I did it sooner. Tinted brow gels to me are such a hit or a miss, but this one has the perfect amount of tint and it has great hold. So if you're looking for that combination, I would definitely check this one out. So since this is my only brow product that I'll be talking about today, we're gonna go for something quite natural. That's a lie. I just realized the Unleashia brow product. I discovered them in 2023. I can't believe I forgot them, especially since I just filmed Unleashia. All right, going back a little bit. The Shaper Palm My Ever Fixer. Love this stuff. Definitely a do for an expensive one. And then their brow pencils. These are so great if you want more of a natural look. I have them in taupe. They look so effortless. I love the combination of these two. I can't believe I forgot to talk about them. And I mentioned in my Alicia video that they're like my favorite products from Alicia. I'm so sorry, guys. The Alicia ones and the NYX one, top, top, top. The eye products, specifically eyeshadow palettes. I haven't really been into eyeshadow palettes. Definitely not the really big ones that just have to stay on your vanity or in your room. I like mini ones, the ones that can fit in your palm. They're just more travel friendly, just overall easier. So the one that I've used the absolute most is the Unleashia Glitterpedia in number two olive brown. It's your neutral. So you got your mattes, you got your shimmers, you got your chunky glitters, everything that you would need. This is what I've been using like day to day or when I don't know what kind of eye look to go for. This has been like my safety blanket where I know it's going to look good. The only thing with these as far as the, the shimmers and the ones that are more creamy, you do have to use a primer. They will crease. And then the other one, which maybe I've only talked about once or twice this year, I just wore it for New Year's Eve. This is the, it says Roto Pro Eye Palette. Look at these colors. How much fun these colors are. You get a mix. There are no matte, but you get a mix. And then I was looking because I got it on Amazon. It's called Amy's Diary Store. I'm not sure, but a hundred plus people bought it in the past month, which is very interesting. So I want to show you guys this one right here this purpley pink one because i think it's a dupe although i don't have the more expensive one it looks like a dupe for one of the pat mcgrath bigger eyeshadow palettes the one that's purpley i'll have it up here i can't remember the name but it gives me that vibe i feel like that swatch isn't doing it justice i think i'm gonna wear this just because i really haven't worn it too much on camera but i do want to keep it quite simple since the lips will be doing all the talking you get a mix of shimmers and chunky glitters i think i think i'm gonna go with this one right here that was the bottom one in the middle and there are no names i'm obsessed with eyeshadows like this i think ever since i discovered unleashia and who like the unleashia aesthetic with shimmers and glitters when you like sparkle i would definitely check out this one i'll this one linked down below but i'll also just have my amazon storefront linked down below as well i think i'm gonna apply a little more of that shadow and be a little more dramatic with it and go higher than what I would usually do. This is the only shadow that I'll be wearing today. I have two more single one and done eyeshadows. I really should do a dedicated video. I can't believe I didn't do it, I don't know, a year or so ago. I think I should. If you guys are interested in a single one and done eyeshadow video, let me know down below and I can do maybe just one or split it between something more drugstore and high-end. Starting off with the Jones Road, the best eyeshadow. So the one that I wore the most, this one in copper, it's just so similar to my skin tone. And for these types of shadows, you don't have to worry about a primer. And then this one is in Penny, both great neutrals to wear. This to me is something you wear to work, where it's not too sparkly, it's not gonna be too distracting, but you want just something on the eyes. You don't want a matte, you want a little bit of something. something. If I was working in an office this would be the type of shadows i would wear and the maybelline color tattoo 24 hour shadow stick i recently got this green one the one that i had when they first launched it is in i am courageous this gives a wet looking effect you want a little more sparkle i would go for this and then the green one which i haven't had the chance to wear but i did want to mention it they do have mattes and i bought one but they're just not as pretty as these look at these two shades i don't really wear green on the eyes but now i'm gonna have to start 
here. You know what? I should include this one in the eyeshadows. This is the Unleash Shea Pretty Easy Glitter Stick in number seven, Sheer Skin. I keep saying it. This might be my third time saying it to you guys, but Sheer Skin is such an appropriate name. I'm gonna put it on the brow bone because that's what it looks like, sheer skin. I think highlighting the brown bone is coming back. We're just seeing it more often. I think these are all my highlighters. Starting off with the first one that I discovered towards the beginning of this year, the Physicians Formula Butter Glow Liquid Highlighter. Because this is such a big bottle, you can totally put this on your body, which I think that's what I'm gonna do today since I haven't done it in a while. This is just a champagne shade. See what I mean? It's not a product that feels greasy or it's just gonna move around. It sets, which is really nice because not all products will do that. For example, this Shea Schwab Butter Glow Stick. This one, you put it on your skin and it does move around. It feels more balmy, where this has more of a dry down. But I personally like wearing this on bare skin. Where the Physicians Formula, I can apply it over makeup. Just kind of depends on what you're looking for. And the last one has to go to the Say Glowy Super Gel. I got it in a set. We have Star Glow and Warm Glow. I think I used Star Glow the most. So let's go in with Warm Glow this time. So it has a pump. You need the tiniest bit, like teeny tiny. Just apply the high points of the cheek on the nose just to finish that nose contour. I'm so glad I got the minis because highlighter in general lasts me forever. This is Star Glow and Warm Glow right next to each other. I'm probably going to travel with this one for my bachelorette. I want to see if I can just put minis in my makeup bag when I go there because I think I'm going to try to bring a carry-on. We'll see. I might have to bring more than that because I have to bring food with me. We got a lot of the products to talk about. I feel like that is always my biggest category because I try so many and I love having a bunch in my bags, on my nightstand and whatnot. Summer Fridays released a few new shades and I use the pink sugar the most. As you can see, there's not that much left. And surprisingly, I didn't think I was gonna use this the most. I thought I was gonna use this one more. This one is cherry, which is what I'll be wearing today. Pink Sugar is very subtle. The pink is so subtle that I almost didn't even notice it at first, but it gives a very sheer wash on the lips. And I think that's why I wore it so much compared to this one. I don't really go for a cherry look on the lips besides today. So I'm gonna wear this today, but I wanna put on a liner to go with it. So we're gonna wait a little bit, but let me show you some other lip products that I've been enjoying. A little bit newer to the collection is the e.l.f. Glow Reviver Lip Oil. I have two. This one is Honey Talks and this one is Jam Session. Many people have been saying Jam Session is a dupe and I'm blanking on what the dupe is. I feel like all of you guys are screaming it at me, but it's the dupe to the very popular one. I just don't have it, but I've been enjoying both of these a lot. And let's just do a side by side. Honey Talks is very sheer. Both of them are sheer, so I'm going to assume all the shades are quite sheer. If you like a sheer wash of color, you would enjoy these. Honey Talks barely shows up on my lips. This one has a minty scent, but it's quite subtle like the Summer Fridays one. Let's talk about a few more lip oils because they are so incredibly popular. The Gizu Honey Infused Lip Oil. Probably the most aesthetically pleasing lip product I'll be talking about today. The curvature, the color, that honey, so pretty. The smell is not gonna be for everyone. I find the smell to be quite strong compared to some of their other products. Like when I was talking about the balm, the body oil, they're all in the same category as fragrance, but this one is just stronger. This has no tint, it's completely sheer. Although it looks yellow, it's not gonna look like that on your lips. They do have a shimmery one, but the shimmer is quite subtle. But I still enjoy it, but that kind of lip oil is a true lip oil where you do have to apply it again and again, where these from the drugstore, the Milani ones, which Milani recently came out and expanded this, they came out with maybe four more shades. I have one of them in Honey Fig, and this one tends to just stay on my lips longer. I wouldn't say they're sticky, they're just thicker. Right now I have Honey Fig and Strawberry Melon. I used to have the Cherry one. I went through that one pretty quickly. Here's a side-by-side -side of those right here. These are more pigmented than the e.l.f. ones, definitely the Gizu one. So if you want some more color to the lips, I would definitely get those. And those smell fruity. Like right now, I can only smell that strawberry melon one. Where the honey fig just has that honey warmth smell to it. It's still really nice. Let's go in with these stains that blew up on TikTok. The Paladilio Lip Stain. A rose and nude. These dry out, so you do want to make sure you're wiping them often. I okay, wore the nude one the most. It's actually looking a little weird. I've taken a break with them and gone back to your regular lip liners, but I loved wearing these during the summertime. I'm 
more so like to layer with these. So I would put this on and then maybe a lip oil after that. So when the lip oil fades, you still have something under it. This is my only lipstick to share with you guys. It's the Ilia Balmy Tint Hydrating Lip Balm. So I guess it's technically a lip balm, which I always forget because it's in a stick form and it feels more like a lipstick, but this is in Faded. I was wearing this a lot during the fall. As you can tell, three of those lip products are brownie. Let's start off with Drugstore, the NYX Lip Pencil. So the one that's not retractable. This one is in New Truffle. So I loved using this more as a contour shade if I was doing something more brownie. Out of all my Drugstore lip liners, I think I use this one the most. And then moving on to a higher price point, we have the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip. This one is in 3c which i wasn't used to that as far as shades so that one is a nudie pink and this is what i'll be wearing today this is from one size this is the lip snatcher the one that i bought first is in out of line this to me is a rosy pink it works well with a lot of my lip products it's kind of more my like day-to-day -day lip liner and see that's a little bit darker than the makeup forever one and the one that i'll be wearing today is in one size red i'm gonna try the cherry cola lips surprisingly i never did a dedicated video on it but i've been just seeing it everywhere so you wear a red liner some people are even doing more of a brown i think it depends if you want something a bit brighter or more brown since we're here we might as well go in with new truffle from nyx and do a combo since this one is brown i'm gonna like mix the two and then we go in with the summer fridays lip butter balm and cherry in the middle and i've noticed this look you want your lip liner to bleed and over time as you're eating and reapplying either your lip balm or lip gloss the center of your lips look a little more sheer where the liner looks just more lived in which is an interesting makeup trend that we've been seeing but i forgot to talk about this lip balm it must have fallen on the ground it's definitely going to be in my winter favorites the persona cosmetics day mask the peptide lip balm everyone's coming out with a lip balm everyone's coming out with lip oils or including peptide in it i feel like those are just the most trendy words that we've been seeing in makeup but this is in june and to me it's the perfect day-to-day -day lip shade and it gives you quite a bit of pigment it's a warm nude and I like wearing it on its own. It gives some shine. It gives a decent amount of pigment. I tried a decent amount of mascaras in 2023, but these are the ones that just kept calling me. Every single time I would reach for one of the drugstore ones that I've been testing out, I would just go back to this or I would either start with this and like mix it with the drugstore one but i had to put these in this video and not include any others so the first one is the cleo kill lash now i believe i talked about the long curling one in black last year so i do want to go and talk about some of the others like the volume curling a personal favorite at the sleek volume they're not all the same there's actually one that's a dud so if you missed that video where i reviewed all of the cleo kalash mascaras i'll leave that right up here i would definitely check that one out and then the other one i would give it to the Minus double lash up mascara now i feel like this one is a bit harder to find so i don't know if they're going to be restocking it or is it going to go away i'm not too sure i didn't want to mention it this year so if you like the cleo mascaras i think you're gonna like this one too it's I think today I'm gonna go with sleek volume. If you want something a little more spidery volume, then the sleek volume is your girl. I don't wear this one as often because it's not my day to day mascara, but when I wanna amp it up a little bit or if I want to blend it with some fake lashes or even when I'm lazy and I don't wanna wear fake lashes, this is the one I tend to go to, but you're not gonna be disappointed with a Cleo Kalash mascara. Although there is one that I do not like, but I can't remember on the top of my head, so. Highly recommend you check out that video. I kept the look pretty simple. I just didn't want to do too much today. So let's move on to the hair. This is the hairbrush that has been very helpful whenever I'm doing a sleek look, whether it's a pony. I used it today, even though I didn't really put any products in my hair besides a little bit of hair oil, because I love using this side just to get everything down. Any baby hairs, anything, and just to keep it flat. So nice and it just grips the hair there's something about a brush where i could just grip it where it's so satisfying so i got this one on amazon it's called diane d811.5 for shampoo and conditioner i only have the shampoo parts this always happens the vega more hydrate 8 hydrate and repair shampoo i love the packaging on this one my favorite type of packaging where you just twist it and the product comes out and you just squeeze it. it just makes life so much easier 
especially when your hands are wet and soapy. I love the smell of this. It doesn't dry my hair. And then when I'm not using this, I've been using the Izu Honey Infuse Hair Wash. I've used this before. I bought it again whenever I did like my last Gizu order just to make it worth it. It's a really nice shampoo if you like their signature scent. If you don't care for it, I don't think it's worth it personally because it's more pricey. I do love their conditioner as well, but for whatever reason, I go through that conditioner so fast, so incredibly fast that I need it to be like double the size or something. It always happens. I might've gotten that conditioner maybe three times already, but every single time I go through it so quickly, probably two months something like that. These have been my go-to shampoos besides using one that's specifically for my scalp, but I've had that one for years. There's a couple more products that I don't have that I completely forgot. Within body care, the Naturium Skin Renewing Retinol Body Lotion. I would get this again. I think they recently came out with more of a body butter, like the Fenty Skin one where it's in a jar. This one was in a squeezy tube, which was really nice. It made my skin look so good, but I'm always trying new body lotions where I'm never really going back. But this is one that I would go back to and it's quite affordable. For hair mask, I have two. One that I used earlier this year, the Color Wow. Oh wow. Wow, this is another color wow product and i just said wow before that this is the money mask Ooh, this is hydrating it will get all the tangles out it just feels so good and luxurious in the hair it's pricey it lasted quite some time i think it lasts close to three months or so that's usually how long a hair mask will last for me this is a really nice hair mask if you want lots of shine i would definitely check that one out and this is the one that i'm currently using this is the being frenchy awaken and uplift citrus amber nourishing hair mask it's affordable i know that it's blown up on tiktok in the past the smell mm. So good. It's citrus, woodsy, like just the combination of the two. I'm almost done with it and maybe have like a quarter left. This is a nice option as well. These products I got from TikTok and I wasn't expecting much. I didn't get it from the TikTok shop because I've never done that before. I feel like I might be the only one. I don't know, I'm just like nervous to buy something on a platform where I don't have history buying something from it. You know what I mean? These are from the same brand, Color Wow. If you need help with the roots or you're going for a blowout and you just want more volume up here and you lack it or maybe you just want to add more to it i love raise the root thickening and lift spray so you put it in your hair when it's damp you really just like massage it in you do your regular blowout and it instantly gives you more volume now if you want more volume towards here down i would go in with the extra large bombshell volumizer so this you would use on damp hair it's a foam you just kind of section it and it helps if your hair is fine even if you have thick hair it could be like individually fine or you lack volume down here like the ear down you just want to create overall more volume i love this stuff it does a great job even though my hair is like a medium density this has helped out with like certain kind of hairstyles where i want it to look more voluminous i almost forgot to include this product because my husband was just using it this morning and it wasn't with all my things but these products so happen to be from day what a coincidence. Also, beautiful packaging, the colors. I got this one from TikTok too because Sophia Richie. This is the Cactus Fruit 3-in-1 Styling Cream. I like using this actually a few different ways, even a few different styles. So that brush that I was talking about earlier, if I want to go for something sleek, I like putting this in my hair like right here. If I just want to add a little more weight to my hair, I love using this. And my husband has curly hair. He loves using it on his curls and just this alone is good enough for him. I also like using this on my natural hair texture and I have wavy hair. So this can be used with a bunch of different hair textures for different hairstyles. One day I'm going for a sleek look, one day I'm going for a more natural wavy look, and this can do both. And it's the other day product, the Hibiscus Wave Spray. This is very weightless. It's not drying. Some wave sprays can feel very drying and stiff. This is quite flexible. I feel like if I wear it today, I can add more tomorrow to enhance the waves. I can use this on my natural wave texture. I can also use this if I'm going for more of like a beachy wave look using a smaller curling iron just to add more pieciness and separation. I'm surprised I haven't gone through more of this, but I did take a break um, 
this fall and winter. Usually wave sprays, I tend to use spring and summer. Those are all of my yearly favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I was able to condense it so it's not as long as some of my previous videos. If you wanna see more of these types of videos, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more fashion and beauty content. I will see you guys in another video. And guess what? It's probably going to be all of the new e.l.f. releases. And I'm so excited. I think I'll do a first impressions. It's been in maybe a couple weeks since it's been out. So I don't know if it's still be relevant for first impression, but either way, I'm talking too much. I will see you guys in another video. Bye.